Hey guys, this is Aaron. Had a question come up on a YouTube video in the comments. Somebody was asking for a little more information about Intersect. I don't know if you've seen Intersect. Anytime you select a surface and right click, you get the context menu. And one of the options in there is Intersect With. There's a bunch of options in there. Context, model, selected. Um, it can be a little confusing about what you're going to get when you click which. So I figured we would hop in and just clarify exactly what it is you're going to get. So let's do that right now. All right, I have this little cheese tray, but I want some more cheese for my cheese tray. So I'm going to make a piece of cheese over here. Um, not a huge fan of Swiss, but it's definitely got an iconic look. You know, it's got its own thing going on. Uh, good branding with the little holes and everything sets it apart. So we're going to make a chunk of Swissy type cheese. And we're going to do that using the intersect command. So right here, I have my cheese wedge is in a group. And in a second group are all these half spheres I created. I actually have a couple copies of this because we're going we're gonna to do this a couple times. So first things first, if I select grouped geometry. So right now, I just pick these two groups and right click. You can see I do get the option of intersect faces. And I have the model or the option with model or with selection. So with model says take whatever is selected right now and intersect it with anything it hits in the entire model. Whereas intersect faces with selection says intersect it only with what's selected. In this case, I don't have anything hidden. So this is everything that I have that it's going to intersect. So it won't matter which one I click. So I'm going to go ahead and click with model. That's going to take just a second. And there we go. We have our, our geometry has been intersected. Now, because both the wedge and the circles were groups, here's what we actually ended up with. If I take this wedge and I scoot it over here and I grab the group with the half spheres and move it, what it created was geometry where the two pieces intersected. The actual geometry that was in the groups, you can see, was not affected by the intersect at all. So that is one option for intersecting. I'm going to go ahead and undo that intersection. And I'm going to come into this wedge right here. I'm going to select just this surface. And then I'm going to right click intersect faces. And I have the option of with model or with context. With context says intersect with everything else that's in the current container group or component. So if I was to say intersect faces with context, nothing happens. And it tells me there's no intersections to be had. Okay. If I select that same surface, right click intersect face with model, then it breaks that. But that's really all it does. If I was to go up to view component edit and hide rest of model, this is all I created. I created a couple of circles on the face and that's it. So that's all that intersection did. Likewise, if I come out and double click on my half spheres, nothing happened here. So I didn't create uh, a new shape with kind of that bubble look into the face of the cheese. All I really created in that case was a couple of circles on the face of my wedge. So that's not going to work. That's not what I'm looking for in this case. All right, over here, I have something a little bit different. Um, I have each of these is a separate uh, group. And then the wedge is a group. Everything would pretty much behave the same here. I just really wanted to call out that the fact that these were all grouped together versus individual is not going to make a difference. If I come in here and select this, I have the same option, intersect face with context or model. Context says nothing with model will give me those same circles I saw before. It doesn't make any difference if the circles come out of one big group or a bunch of little groups. There's no difference there. So I just wanted to point that out. So what I'm really looking for is a wedge of cheese with some bubbles in it. Those, those half circles should actually be taken out of the face of this cheese. So if I come in here, nothing is grouped over here. This is all just loose geometry. You can see nothing's intersected either. I can move any of these pieces away. It's all just overlapping. If I was to select just this surface right now, right click intersect faces. My only option is with model because I don't have anything else selected. I could, however, 
do a group select. What this is going to do right here is this is going to intersect my faces of the wedge with my half spheres. It's also going to intersect the half spheres with the wedge. So what that means is if I right click intersect face with selection, it's going to say any selected face intersect at any place it hits any other selected face. So if I say intersect with selection, that gives me a bunch of broken stuff. If I come in here right now, if I select this face and delete it, look what happens. There's my half sphere shape on the inside. And I can select this piece on the outside and get rid of it. So if I just click around here and get rid of this extra geometry, I end up with my Swiss cheesy look. I could have made some cheese jokes that I didn't. I just want you all to know that. I respect you too much to make easy cheesy jokes. So with that, I can make that a group. I can grab it, bring it over here, drop it on my tray, and there we go. That is a quick review of how intersect with model, context, or selection works. So hopefully you like that and hopefully that taught you something new. That's really what we shoot for here is to give you some new tip. Um, if so, go ahead and click like down below. If you want to see more of these videos, we do release them every week. So click subscribe and you'll be notified the next time a video comes out. More importantly than anything though, please leave a comment. This video is a direct result of a comment we received from a subscriber on YouTube. So tell us what you'd like to see, what you're struggling with, or maybe a cool tip that you know that we could make into a skill builder video. Like making these videos, we'll like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.